This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. Students at Peninsula Elementary in Moses Lake pedaled their way to class on Wednesday as part of National Bike to School Day. Washington's chief wildlife official says he agrees with the federal plan to remove gray wolves in the state from the endangered species list. The Warden Cougars baseball team has had a great season so far. When the Mountain Vikings boys soccer team came to Royal City Tuesday evening, a playoff berth was on the line. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Students at Peninsula Elementary in Moses Lake pedaled their way to class on Wednesday as part of National Bike to School Day. About 100 students gathered in the Sendero Life Center parking lot before school, joined by teachers, parents, Moses Lake Police, and the Grant County Health District. The event was all about bike safety, with students participating in a skills course to learn hand signals and safety on the road. Students who showed up without a helmet were provided a new one, and the students were able to register their bike with the police department. The event concluded with a short bike ride to school with an escort provided by Moses Lake Police. National Bike to School Day is designed to raise awareness of the needs for safe routes for biking and walking and emphasizes the importance of physical activity for children and pedestrian safety. Wednesday's event was organized by the Peninsula PTO to provide students the opportunity to learn and practice their bike safety skills. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Change doesn't have to be complicated with a low-profile microwave hood combination that's ready to install right out of the box. It fits in the same space as your under-cabinet hood, so you can get your microwave off the countertop and make space for the routines worth keeping. The low-profile microwave hood combination from the number one selling appliance brand in the USA. Whirlpool Appliances, now available at More Furniture in Efreda. Washington's chief wildlife official says he agrees with the federal plan to remove gray wolves in the state from the endangered species list. Department of Fish and Wildlife Director Kelly Suswind wrote a letter to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, saying his office, quote, is well prepared to be the management authority for wolves statewide and would be pleased to see limited federal resources directed to other species still critically in need. The gray wolf population has grown quickly since it was first redocumented in 2008 almost 100 years after disappearing from Washington due to hunting, poaching, and loss of habitat. With that success in mind, the Trump administration announced in March it wanted to remove Endangered Species Act protections for the wolf throughout the lower 48 states. Wolf packs in western Washington are protected federally, while packs in eastern Washington are managed entirely by Suswin's department. There are believed to be about 122 of the animals in 22 packs statewide. Jefferson Robbins, i Fiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Your taste buds bored? Well then bring them to Jay's Teriyaki. Not only does Jay's have a variety of teriyaki dishes, they also offer mouth-watering salads and sides. Call Jay's 509-764-5155. Jay's Teriyaki, located at 123 East Broadway in Moses Lake. Because it's all in the sauce. The Warden Cougars baseball team has had a great season so far, finishing as league champs in the SCAC for the first time since 2010. They were quick to capitalize on their seeding Tuesday afternoon when they hosted the SCAC West number 4 seed, the Cleet Elam Roslyn Warriors. The Cougars got on the board quickly, scoring two runs in the first inning and five more in the second inning. The Warriors finally tightened up their defense after falling into the 7-0 hole, shutting the Cougars out in the third inning and only allowing one run in the fourth. The Warriors' offense had no answer for Warden pitcher Wade Visker, who only allowed one hit through five innings. The Cougars loaded the bases in the bottom of the fifth, where Caden Scone hit a double, scoring two runners to end the game via mercy rule, 10-0. Two more runs, and I'll just try to get the job done. It wasn't the prettiest, but it worked, so. That was the plan, come in, come in quick, get out quick, um, just get, come out with the W, try to make it a quick game. The Cougars will host the semifinal round when the SCAC West number two seed comes to town, Zilla. Head coach Travis Visker knows his team will be up for the challenge against an unfamiliar foe. Zilla, on the other hand, we haven't seen him all season. Um, I'm just kind of, you know, know a little bit from last year when we played him, and I know a few of their, their names, and, you know, and, and uh, I'm going to do some more homework on them and, and see what we can 
we should go from there, but I, I'm pretty confident that we'll, we'll, we'll make a game of it. The semifinal game will take place on Friday at 4 p.m. The winner of the game will clinch a spot in the state playoffs. I'm Adam Chikoski, for i Fiber one Sports. When the Mountain Vikings boys soccer team came to Royal City Tuesday evening, a playoff berth was on the line. The Royal Knights came out swinging and blew the Vikings away, winning 5-0 and earning their third consecutive trip to the state playoffs and their sixth trip in the last eight years. The Vikings are used to a much more narrow field, which the Knights didn't waste any time exploiting. Sophomore Alicio Romero scored the first goal in the second minute, and things didn't get better for the Vikings from there. Miguel Torres, Luis Rodriguez, Alonso Hernandez, and Romero for a second time all found the back of the net before the first half was over. Well, it was really important because um, that team's really strong, and to score earlier, you put them down faster, and it was just better to score. The Knights entered halftime with a staggering five-goal lead. The Vikings came out focused and adjusted to the larger field in the second half, proving why they're number two seed, but the damage was already done. The Knights rolled on to the 5-0 victory to advance to the SCAC championship game, where they'll face their conference rivals, Waluke. The winner of the game will host the first two games of state, while the loser will be on the road, so both teams will want this victory. Head coach Jens Jensen knows they have a tough battle ahead. You know, that uh, flip a coin, man. I mean, flip a coin. They're, well, Luke is good, okay? Um, we, we know generally what you need to do to stop them. They know probably generally. We know each other too well, right? So they know generally what they've got to do to try to stop us. And so I don't know. Yeah, if I had to guess, I'd say it's either one goal or a stalemate. The SCAG Championship game will be held at Nazis Valley High School Thursday night at 6 p.m. I'm Adam Chikoski, Fry Fiber One Sports. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, visit us online at iFiberOne.com or check us out on Facebook.